Now, it is a tale of intrigue and multi-million dollar corruption which led to the mysterious death of a lawyer in a Russian jail two nights ago. Sergei Magnitsky was working for William Browder, the London-based investor wanted by Moscow for alleged tax evasion. In a moment, we'll be talking to Mr. Browder, but first, was the death of his lawyer an accident or a deliberate act of revenge? Here's our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Rugman. Sergei Magnitsky was just 37 when he died in a Moscow jail after repeatedly complaining about the conditions in which he was kept. He'd accused Russian officials of massive financial fraud and he'd been arrested for tax evasion by those same officials just a month later. The Russian authorities say his death was a total surprise and that he'd never complained of poor health. But today the lawyer's boss told Channel 4 News his friend had repeatedly complained of stomach problems in jail and that his death was nothing short of murder. Is murder too strong a word? No, murder is not too strong a word. When somebody needs medical care and you know they need medical care and you prevent them from getting it until they die of that condition, that's murder. So you're saying your colleague was murdered? My colleague, my colleague was slowly murdered, yes, he was. It, it's, not as, it's not as racy sounding as if they had beat him, but yes, he was murdered. If murder it was, the motive was perhaps revenge. For Magnitsky worked for this man, William Browder, the multimillionaire head of the hedge fund Hermitage Capital Management, and once Russia's biggest foreign investor. But the Russians banned Browder from the country after he dared to crusade against corruption in his Russian investments. And when Browder's lawyer Magnitsky testified against officials, they said Hermitage owed over $17 million in back taxes and threw the lawyer in jail. There clearly needs to be an investigation into the whole circumstance of Magnitsky's death. Uh, it, but including and especially really into the question of whether this was a vendetta uh, by the authorities against Magnitsky and his client. Um, and whether his abuse and uh, indeed his death uh, were perhaps uh, in retaliation uh, for the fact that he had uh, essentially charged uh, interior, interior Affairs Ministry officials with embezzlement of $230 million. As for Moscow's claim that it didn't know its prisoner was unwell, well that's flatly contradicted by this 40-page document Magnitsky sent to the prosecutor in September. He said a doctor had diagnosed him with serious stomach problems back in June, but that he was allowed medicine only two months later on September the 4th. He documented how he was not allowed showers and hot water. His wife and family not allowed to see him for almost the year he spent in jail. There was no hot water, there was often no heat, and, uh, and, and then when he developed a severe medical condition, they withheld medical care until he died. Russia's interior ministry says its prisoner died of toxic shock and heart failure, and that it had no interest in causing the death of a man it had a solid case against. Magnitsky's friends say he paid the ultimate price for doing business in Russia, death. Jonathan Rugman reporting. William Browder, the investor who was represented by Sergei Magnitsky, is with us now. Now, you've had a very publicized, long-running battle with the Russian authorities. They accuse you of tax evasion. You accuse them of corruption. Do you think your lawyer has been effectively killed in that battle? Well, if you look at the, the circumstances, it's, it's quite um, clear. He, he testified against certain interior ministry officers who were involved in a major tax rebate fraud of $230 million. And the same officer who he testified against arrested him, stuck him in jail. Um, he was healthy when he went into jail. And then um, his condition deteriorated. He requested medical attention on many, many, many occasions. He was denied medical attention. And then two nights ago, he died. Now, the, the fact pattern pretty much speaks for itself, which is that um, um, the guys who stole $230 million well, well, basically uh, put him in this position. Now, as you know, the authorities um, argue that he was in perfect health all along. <laughs> well, um, as, as, as you've just seen, there's a 40-page letter. But not just that. I, I can show you many, many letters from the authorities to him and to his lawyers denying him medical access. They mm -hmm. say, no, we reject your request to see a doctor. No, we reject your request for medicine. No, we reject your request for an ultrasound. Do, do you think there's any course <clears throat> of action you could have taken to save his life? 
we, 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 we made a YouTube video to try to promote his situation. We, 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 I testified in, in front of the U.S. Congress. I've been to the Houses of Parliament. We've written letters. I just, I just, but then do you, do you believe that, that <clears throat> anybody who uh, in some way represents you is in danger? Well, I'll tell you what happened was that after we disclosed the involvement of Interior Ministry officials in $230 million tax fraud, they went after four different law firms that represented us. And so we ended up in a situation <clears throat> where almost all the lawyers have fled the country of Russia and been given sanctuary in the UK. The only lawyer who didn't was Sergei Magnitsky. He thought, Russia is a country with laws. I can come back. I can stay in Russia. I didn't do anything wrong. How can they arrest me? In a sense, this is the surfacing of an old uh, allegation against Russia, which is that it's not a safe place to do business. Um, but in many ways, it looked as if it had become safer. What are you arguing tonight? Well, look at the situation. Um, I was once the largest foreign investor in the country, and they kicked me out four years ago. They then raided our offices, stole our companies, um, did a massive tax fraud, um, imprisoned my lawyer, and then he dies. Um, is that a country you want to invest in? What, 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 <clears throat> what should the international community do, do you think? Well, I think that, that everybody should be outraged about this situation. You have an innocent 37-year-old man who died in custody, and I think there needs to be a demand by all different quarters for an investigation into the circumstances of his death. And, uh, and I hope that the, the truth comes out about um, the involvement of the people who um, put him there. William Browder, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, ten years after devolution, Wales could be given greater powers